Hi students, we are going to start 5.06 Art and Politics. Right click on your quiz and open the link in a new window. Excellent, get your quiz started. Resize it so that it fits in your window nicely. Still have a nice scroll bar and you can read the questions. Here we go, number one. How did Ben Sean express his outrage about the Sacco and Benzidi trial in this painting? Sean adapted and combined newspaper photographs of the trial to create a powerful abstract composition. Sean portrayed a sense of grief in the review panel members standing over the coffins of Sacco and Vanzetti. Sean cut and pasted magazine and newspaper photographs of the trial directly onto the canvas. Sean used organic shapes and lifelike color to represent the figures and objects in the composition. Question two. How did Pablo Picasso use Guernica to make a political statement about the Spanish Civil War? Picasso painted the scene from his imagination rather than referencing newspaper photographs. Picasso created a painting that conveys the suffering inflicted on civilians by a bombing raid. Picasso depicted a moving scene that captures bombs descending from airplanes in the sky. Picasso included an unflattering portrait of leaders of the nationalist forces in the background. Question three. How did Picasso strengthen the effect of suffering on Guernica? Picasso used shades of gray to draw the viewer's attention away from the figures. Picasso included symbols that represent the suffering that he felt during his life. Picasso arranged the figures and objects along strong horizontal lines. Picasso used fragmented distorted shapes for the figures and objects. Let's find out. Many modern artists use their work to make political statements about international events and social injustices. The post-World I period, World War I period, was a time of revolution, extremism, and intolerance. In Europe and America, painters expressed their anger in politically charged canvases that confronted viewers and challenged their attitudes. Guernica by Pablo Picasso, Oil on Canvas, 1937. Goals for the lesson. Identify distinguishing characteristics of social realism and political art. Identify how works of social realist and political art reflects beliefs of their time and place. Europe and America after World War I. For victor and vanquish alike, the two decades following the war to end all wars comprised a period of political upheaval. In Russia, revolutionaries overthrew the Tsar in 1917 and established the Soviet Union as a communist state. In 1922, the right-wing fascist party gained control in Italy. In 1933, the Nazis took over Germany. Three years later, Spain erupted in civil war between the nationalists, supported by Germany and Italy, and the Soviet-backed Republicans. England, France, and the United States weathered the storm with their democracies intact, but faced economic instability and domestic unrest. In all three countries, socialist, communist, and anarchist splinter groups agitated for change, sometimes violently. In America, a large influx of immigrants, two million from Italy alone in the first decade of the 20th century, fueled a climate of ethnically motivated fear and suspicion against foreigners and political radicals. Germany's Adolf Hitler rose to power following that nation's devastating defeat in World War I. As a prelude to World War II, Spain erupted in a bloody civil war between left-wing and right-wing factions. The upheavals in Europe led thousands of Europeans to immigrate to the United States. Social and political statements in art. Art that depicts social and political injustices is nothing new. Romantic artist Francisco Goya painted the 3rd of May, 1808, to commemorate the brutal killing of Spanish peasants by Napoleonic soldiers during the French occupation of Spain. Eugène Delacroix depicted the 1830 revolt of the French people against the monarchy in Liberty Leading the People. The upheaval of the early 20th century spurred artists like Ben Sean and Pablo Picasso to create works 
that made strong social and political statements about their injustices of the day. Sean and other artists who made a career of depicting the ugly side of contemporary life belong to an art movement that historians label social realism. Social realists championed the working class in works telling of poverty, war, labor issues, and political corruption. The artists wanted their works to appeal to the viewer's sense of morality rather than to be images that appeal to the eye. Here is Francisco Goya's The Third of May, portraying an atrocity committed during the French occupation of Spain, and Eugene Delacroix's Liberty Leading the People, heroically portraying French commoners revolting against the monarchy in 1830. And like Goya and Delacroix before him, Ben Sean painted the passion of Sacco and Vanzetti as a protest against an injustice of his time. Like Goya and Delacroix before him, Pablo Picasso painted his Guernica as a protest against an injustice of his time. Ben Sean, born in 1898 in Lithuania, then part of the Russian Empire, Ben Sean was four when his father was exiled to Siberia for subversive activities against the Tsarist regime. In 1906, his father escaped and the entire family immigrated to New York, to Brooklyn, New York. Sean began his artistic studies as an apprentice lithographer and then went on to study painting. In 1924, Sean married Tilly Goldstein and the two traveled extensively throughout North Africa and Europe where Sean studied the expressive works of artists such as Henri Matisse, Pablo Picasso, and Paul Klee, and others. When he returned to New York, Sean developed his own style of social realism. He explored themes of social injustice and used his paintings to provoke dialogue around important issues. Sean was also an accomplished photographer who worked alongside Dorothea Lange and Walker Evans for the Farm Security Administration. Sean amassed an incredible collection of photographs that provided inspiration for both content and composition in his paintings. After studying the works of Matisse, Picasso, and Klee, Ben Sean developed his own style. The Case of Sacco and Vanzetti In the early 1930s, Sean completed a series of gauche paintings about the highly publicized 1927 trial of Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti. These two Italian immigrants and self-professed anarchists were accused of killing two men during a robbery. Even though the evidence against them was equivocal, the presiding judge showed a clear bias toward the prosecution. A Massachusetts court found Sacco and Vanzetti guilty of murder, and they were sentenced to death in the electric chair. Here, Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti posed for the camera while shackled to each other and to a guard. A gauche painting is a type of watercolor painting with an opaque quality. Remember, opaque means that it's not transparent. You can't see through it. The Passion of Sacco and Vanzetti. Sean, along with many others who had followed the trial closely, felt that the verdict was a travesty and that the court had convicted Sacco and Vanzetti based solely on their ethnic origin and anarchist beliefs. Sean painted the passion of Sacco and Vanzetti to express his outrage. A portrait of trial judge Webster Thayer with his hand raised in moral piety is prominently displayed above the courthouse steps in the background. Thayer supervised the trial and the appeal process, yet he was a controversial, outspoken figure who bragged of convicting the radical Italians. Two members of the review panel, the president of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a retired judge named Grant, stand over the coffins dressed in formal top hats and overcoats. Chad, in his academic cap and gown, Harvard University President A. Lawrence Lowell, was appointed by the governor of Massachusetts to chair a review of the proceedings. Lowell declared the trial a fair one and allowed the sentence to be carried out. 
The bodies of Sacco and Vanzetti lie in coffins at the bottom of the painting with their faces cast in a lifeless gray pallor. Sean's inspiration. The trial of Sacco and Vanzetti received broad press coverage. Newspapers published many photographs of the convicted men and others involved in the trial. Sean adapted and combined these images to create his powerful composition. Sean used his knowledge of synthetic cubism to create a tightly packed vertical composition. The abstract figures are assembled with flat shapes and sharp angular forms. Sean did not strive for lifelike realism in his paintings. Instead, he created almost mask-like faces on the three review panel members and the deceased Sacco and Vanzetti. Sean adapted and combined photographic images of the Sacco and Vanzetti trial for his painting. Rather than striving for lifelike realism, he abstracted the figures and objects. Compare the images of Sacco and Vanzetti in the photograph and in Sean's painting. In what ways do you think Sean captured the men's likenesses? In what ways did Sean abstract the men's faces? What is the effect of Sean's use of punches of pure color to accentuate the shades of gray in Sacco and Vanzetti's faces? Here we are comparing The Passion of Sacco and Vanzetti to Brock's Still Life. Sean was influenced by synthetic cubism. Compare Sean's painting with Still Life Le Jour by Georges Brock. Sean used the flat shapes and sharp angular forms that he saw in synthetic cubism. He created unity in the painting by repeating geometric shapes and vertical and horizontal lines. Sean painted his abstract figures with flat shapes and angular forms. Pablo Picasso once declared that painting is not made to decorate apartments. It is an instrument for offensive and defensive war against the enemy. This statement perhaps best describes Picasso's reaction to a 1937 incident during the Spanish Civil War. Living in Paris at the time, Picasso was horrified to learn that hundreds of innocent civilians had perished during a bombing raid on the northern Spanish town of Guernica. Earlier that year, the Spanish Republican government had invited Picasso to produce a mural for the Paris International Exhibition. He abandoned his original theme and seized the opportunity to publicize the tragedy of Guernica, thus creating one of the most iconic images of his artistic career. This photograph shows destruction in Guernica caused by a bombing raid during the Spanish Civil War. Guernica. Picasso greeted Guernica to capture the violence, horror, and suffering caused by the bombing of a town full of civilians. Yet there are no bombs or airplanes to be seen in the sky. Instead, the viewer witnesses the results of the brutal act. Guernica presents a jumbled mass of bodies, animals, and geometric shapes in a stark palette of black, white, and various shades of gray. The monumental painting measures 11 feet, 5 inches tall, and 25 feet, 5 inches long. A single light bulb forming the shape of an eye hangs above the horse. What do you think it might symbolize? Various interpretations. I'm going to move this over so maybe I can read it and you can see the image over here. Various interpretations have been suggested. Some historians believe that it represents another aspect of suffering and that it resembles the type of bare light bulb found in a torture cell. Others suggest it represents the bright flash of a bomb exploding. Others believe that the light represents Picasso's intention of illuminating the horror experienced in Guernica to the world. Picasso used short hatch marks to create the effect of newspaper print. The patterns represent the newspaper articles he read that detailed the horrors of the massacre. And the black, white, and gray that Picasso used etched echo the tones of the newspaper photographs. 
Restricting the painting to those tones allows the viewer to focus completely on the victims of the horrible event. How might the use of vivid color compete for the viewer's attention? Picasso depicts a tormented mother holding her dead baby. She is shown in dramatic profile, arching her head back and wailing in grief. Picasso included an image of a bull to represent brutality and darkness. A horse rears its head in pain and terror. The dagger-like tongue shape reveals its agony and is repeated in the bull and in the mother cradling her child on the left side of the painting. Picasso used the horse as a symbol of the suffering of innocent victims. Picasso used the cubist technique of fragmentation to create effect when depicting a slain warrior. The warrior's dismembered body lies on the ground, the fist of his severed arm gripping a weapon. Why do you suppose Picasso painted flowers sprouting from the sword? Another woman staggers in pain as she drags her heavy limbs behind her. A woman's floating head emerges from a window. Her elongated arm stretching in front of her holds an oil lamp. A woman consumed by flames throws her head and arms to the sky in anguish. Guernica's Composition Picasso incorporated elements of cubism into his iconic image. He used simple organic and geometric shapes to create objects and figures, reassembling them and showing fragments from different viewpoints. How do you think that this technique emphasized the grisly nature of the subject matter? Picasso's neutral palette emphasizes the hopelessness of war, while the distorted figures and exaggerated expressions emphasize the terror. Picasso united the jumbled mass of figures by using the pyramid configuration and arranging many of the figures with a central triangle. So here is that pyramid composition. And look at the diagonals. The painting has a strong sense of movement in the way that Picasso arranged the fragmented limbs and reassembled figures on strong diagonal lines. The twisted heads and outstretched poses of the figures create a sense of motion. Okay, let's see if we can answer the questions in this quiz. So question one, how did Ben Sean express his outrage about the Sacco and Vanzetti trial in this painting? Sean adapted and combined newspaper photographs of the trial to create a powerful abstract composition. I'd say that's probably true. Sean portrayed a sense of grief in the review panel members standing over the coffins of Sacco and Vanzetti. Actually, no, um, they're, they're not grieving. They're the ones who had them executed without evidence. Sean cut and pasted magazine and newspaper photographs of the trial directly onto the canvas. Nope, he didn't do that. That would be a collage. Sean used organic shapes and lifelike color to represent the figures and objects in the composition. No, um, he used a lot of geometric shapes and um, kind of like distorted lines, angular lines and things like that. And he used like solid gray colors to represent their dead faces. Their color is not lifelike. It's purposefully not lifelike. So I'd go with uh, um, using those photographs as a reference, right, to create that powerful abstract composition. Question two, how did Pablo Picasso use Guernica to make a political statement about the Spanish Civil War? Picasso painted the scene from his imagination rather than referencing newspaper photographs. Picasso created a painting that conveys the suffering inflicted on civilians by a bombing raid. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Picasso depicted a moving scene that captures bombs descending. No, nope, there weren't any airplanes in the sky, remember? Picasso included an unflattering portrait of leaders of the nationalist for forces in the background. No. Nope. So this is just a painting that conveys the suffering inflicted on the civilians by that raid. Question three. 
How did Picasso strengthen the effect of suffering in Guernica? Picasso used shades of gray to draw the viewer's attention away from the figures. No, he wasn't trying to draw your attention away from them. That's not why he used gray. He used gray to show the suffering. Picasso included symbols that represent the suffering that he felt during his life. Uh, I don't know that if this is about the suffering he did in his life. This is about the suffering of these civilians. Uh, Picasso arranged the figure, figures and objects along strong horizontal lines. You know, remember we talked about using th diagonal lines to create that movement and dynamic composition. Picasso used fragmented, distorted shapes for the figures and objects. Yes, he did that for sure. You can see those fragmented, distorted shapes here. All right, save and submit. Good job.